Hey, hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and I'm back with my second video in this Illustrator tutorial series. My hope is that this series will help sort of demystify Adobe Illustrator so that you can start designing your own SVGs, printables, and more. Last week I started off with an overview of the Adobe Illustrator workspace, and today we are kind of jumping into shapes. Specifically, we're talking about the building blocks of what makes a shape in Adobe Illustrator. These elements are called paths, anchor points, and handles, and they basically make up pretty much any shape that you're going to create in Adobe Illustrator. Understanding these elements from the start means that you will be able to manipulate just about anything on your artboard in very small ways to make very unique designs. Like I said in my last video, I didn't really understand paths, anchor points, and handles when I first started using Adobe Illustrator, but once I learned the design capabilities really open up. You'll understand how images are actually made in Illustrator, and it will give you a better sense of what you can do with Illustrator as we go forward. As always, I highly recommend you get used to using keyboard shortcuts. I'll be using them in this video. I also have a free printable cheat sheet, which you can download at the link in the description. Using keyboard shortcuts can really speed up your workflow because you are not spending all the time dragging that mouse and choosing the tools you need. You're just hitting a key on the keyboard. It is really so much faster. All right, let's go ahead and dive back into Adobe Illustrator. I have my 12 inch by 12 inch artboard, just like I had in the workspace overview last lesson. Um, before we get into paths and anchor points and handles, I wanted to give you one more bit of terminology that you will see me use here and there. And I don't want you to get this particular thing confused with what we're gonna be learning in this class. So I'm going to draw a circle. The keyboard shortcut for that is L. And go ahead and draw myself a little circle here. Now I wanted to point out the box around your circle. This is called the bounding box and it basically encloses your entire shape. Every shape, every piece of text, everything has a bounding box. And I just didn't want you to get the bounding box confused with some of the other things we're gonna be talking about in this lesson. I'm going to click V to get back to my select tool. You can use the bounding box to rotate. So I have my circle here, there's no corners to rotate, but the bounding box provides those corners. So I can go ahead and use that to rotate my circle. Obviously rotating a circle doesn't really change much. Um, I can also use it to resize my circle, just like this. Um, I just wanted to let you know that this bounding box is here. We will be talking about it occasionally um, in relation to other things we are doing, but just so you know, that is the bounding box. It is different than the paths, anchor points, and handles that we're going to be going into right now. Here we are with our trusty circle. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut A to get us to the direct selection tool. If you remember, the regular selection tool allows us to move shapes as a whole. The direct selection tool allows us to move a part of a shape or deal with a part of a shape. I'm going to start by hovering over this arc over here in the top right quadrant of my circle. When I hover over it, you'll see that it says path. It's very small. I hope you can see it. Um, in pink, it says path. So this whole thing here is a path. A path is basically a line in Illustrator. There are three types of paths. There is a closed path, like our circle here. This is one big closed path. There's an open path, which we can make by just drawing a line. This is an open path. It doesn't close. The two ends don't meet. And then there are compound paths, which are two or more closed paths. I'm not going to go into the details about that now, but compound paths are particularly important when designing SVG files, and we will be going into that more in future tutorials. Now with that direct selection tool, go ahead and click on the path, hold down your mouse, and drag it around. You can see you can make all sorts of really interesting shapes by dragging on this path. As you do this, you'll see these lines coming out. Those are handles. We will go ahead and talk about those in just a minute, but just go ahead and play with your path. See what you can do. You can grab different parts of the path. I can make this here. I can grab the other side here and make sort of an oblong shape. I could grab here and make some sort of squarish shape. Just go ahead and click around on those paths to just sort of get an idea that they move around when you click and drag them. Now go ahead and click Control Z or Command Z to undo until you get your circle back. Now let's talk about anchor points and handles, and we need to talk about them together because they are sort of inextricably linked. This can be a little bit tricky, a little bit technical, but go ahead and stick with me. Like I've said so many times, these are the building blocks of everything in Illustrator, so you're gonna see them all the time when working in here. And just getting that first idea of what they actually do can be so helpful as we move forward through these tutorials. Now let's choose that direct selection tool one more time, A. And if we hover over the top, over this little square, you'll see the word anchor in pink. This is an anchor point and it is represented by this tiny square. 
Other tutorials may call them nodes. Um, a lot of times they are called simply points. I will often probably refer to them just as points, but they are anchor points. And these are very important in Illustrator. Use your mouse to click and drag that anchor point around just like you did the path. And you can see that you'll make sort of similar shapes that you made um, when dragging around the path. And that's because we're using a circle here. Um, so dragging at the top part of the circle is very similar to dragging over here on the path. Coming off of our anchor points are handles. So when you click on an anchor point, you'll see the handles. So if I click on this bottom anchor point here, you'll see the handles. You'll also see that this anchor point controls this path on the right here. It controls this path on the left here, as well as interacting with these other two anchor points on the side, which is why you can see the handles at the bottom of these other two anchor points. If I click this anchor point on the right here, you'll see that it interacts with this arc up here and this arc down here, and the top and bottom anchor points also play into how this arc is being formed. In essence, anchor points are basically points along a path, and the handles control the curvature of the path at each point. And I know your brain is like, oh no, Corey, you have lost me. But let's kind of dive in so we can see what this means. There are sort of three categories of points and handles. All of them are technically born out of the same anchor point. So this anchor point can be any of these three, depending on the handles. So the first type of anchor point up here is smooth. So all four of these anchor points around our circle are smooth. They have curved paths that run through the anchor point. Now, if we draw a rectangle, we'll just draw a small one up here using M as our keyboard shortcut. We have anchor points here as well. So I'm gonna get that direct selection tool one more time. We have anchor points in the corner and these are corner anchor points. There is no curvature to our line here in this anchor point. This also applies in something like, if I go over here to our rectangle tool and choose the star tool and I draw a little star, all of these anchor points are corner anchor points because there's no curvature to these anchor points. There is also something called a combination anchor point, which is where one side of the anchor point is a curve and the other side is straight. We may run across those as we're doing things, but really just keep in mind that those anchor points are controlling the curve. Let's go back to thinking about our circle. Remember the circle has four anchor points, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one on each side. When you click on the anchor point with that direct selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut A, you'll see that all of these anchor points have these handles, right? Now let's select the anchor point tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is shift C and you'll get this sort of little pointy cursor. Now what this tool does is it changes your anchor points from curved to corner anchor points. If you click on a curved anchor point, it will take out all of the curve and give you a corner anchor point. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this first one up here. And now we have a corner anchor point here. We have no handles because our handles are basically retracted into this anchor point. Now, if I click on all the anchor points, what I end up with is a square because I have all of these corner anchor points. And then what I want you to do is to use this rotated square to try and draw your circle again. It's very hard because this particular task is not precise, but it will help you understand how you can go from the corner anchor point back to a curved anchor point. Go ahead and click on your anchor point and drag it down while holding the shift key down. Now, when you do this, you'll see that it creates that curve. The handles create the curve. So we're going to try and make our circle again. Like I said, it's not particularly easy. Now at the top anchor point, start to pull your anchor point to the left, then hold down the shift key so it holds. And we'll pull it out about the same distance. Same here on the right, you can pull up. Note if you pull down, it will turn it the inverse here, but you, so you wanna pull up while holding down that shift key, just like that. And then on the bottom one, you wanna pull toward the left, hold down that shift key, and you can kind of create that circle shape. This is actually a much better circle than anything I was doing in my practice, but really the idea here is to get you comfortable with understanding how anchors and handles create those curved paths. I'm gonna redraw my circle now so I have a perfect circle. Now let's play around with those handles a bit more. Choose that direct selection tool. Again, the keyboard shortcut is A and click on that top anchor. Start by grabbing the right hand handle off the top of this top anchor point and pulling it toward the right. If you hold down the shift key, it will keep your handle horizontal and straight, but you can see here that the path gets longer and the arc gets bigger. So if I pull it out to here, perhaps. Now, if I do the same on the side, again, I'm gonna hold down the shift key as I pull up so it'll keep it straight. You can see here that the farther I pull it, the bigger and longer my arc gets. 
Now, if I drag those same two handles closer to their anchor points, the length of the path will get a lot shorter and the arc will become much less. Again, this is just another way for us to see how those handles affect our shapes. Go ahead and play around with these a little bit, um, lengthening and shortening your arc just to see how it works. All right, I got back to my circle here. Instead of pulling the handle closer or farther away from the anchor point, we're now gonna rotate the handle. So I'm gonna click on the handle and drag it down. Now you can see here that I can also shorten or lengthen as I pull. So the sh closer I get to my anchor point, the shorter my uh, path is, the longer I get to my anchor point, the longer my path is, just like that. The two handles off an anchor point are related when it comes to the curve. So they turn together here with the curve. They are not related when it comes to lengthening your handles. Now if I'm back at my circle, I can show you that like if I turn this here, and then I turn this one here, and then I turn this one here, and I turn this one here, I can make a really interesting shape. Go ahead and play around with both turning your handles as well as lengthening, just to see what sort of shapes you can create. I'm back to my circle here, and like I said before, the two handles for each anchor are related, and when you click on one and rotate it, the other one will go with it. But what if you only want to manipulate one side of your anchor point? That's pretty easy. On a PC, all you have to do is hold down the Alt key while you drag. On a Mac, you hold down the Option key. So if I drag here, you can see that I'm only using one handle here. The one on the left side is staying put. One other simple thing you need to know about anchor points is adding anchor points or deleting anchor points. This is very easy. The keyboard shortcuts for these are plus and minus. You just have to hit the plus or minus key. So I'm going to go ahead and hit plus. You can see that I have a little pen with a plus, and now I can add more anchor points to my shape. There are many reasons you might want to do this. You may want to just adjust a smaller portion of your curves here. You can create all sorts of interesting shapes. You could add, you know, more anchor points here and drag them into different shapes here. You can start to see how this could create some really interesting shapes. I mean, this almost looks like a one of those harps that the angels play. Um, you can start to play around with adding anchor points, maybe make some interesting shapes, but really just start to get familiar with anchor points, handles, and paths. Now, like I said, you can also delete anchor points. So I'm gonna hit the minus button on my keyboard. And if I click on an anchor point, it deletes. So now I have an oval because I deleted the top and bottom anchor points. Depending on how sophisticated you get with your designs, these are two very important tools that will really help you refine the shapes and drawings that you're making in Illustrator. Phew, that was a lot about paths, anchor points, and handles, but hopefully you have a better idea of how shapes are created in Illustrator now. I highly recommend that you just draw some simple shapes in Illustrator and then play around with those paths and anchor points and handles just to see what sort of shapes you can make. The more you play around with them, the more you'll get an idea of the way that you can manipulate shapes. And you may be wondering, you know, why does this matter? But as we go forward, I'm going to be playing with those elements a lot um, as we create SVG designs. So you'll be able to see exactly how those elements relate to designing SVGs. In the next tutorial, we will be tackling text. Text makes really easy SVGs without any drawing or anything else, um, but there are a lot of things we need to know to be able to export that text as an SVG file, so stay tuned for that. If you found this Adobe Illustrator video helpful, of course, I would love for you to give it a like. If you have questions, please leave those down in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. If you want more Adobe Illustrator tutorials along with Cricut Sublimation and Laser tutorials, go ahead and follow my channel. I'll see you next week.